Hello, good morning. I'm sorry we are late. We thought we would start, start a bit later, so we just came here now. Um, we'll talk about reproducible builds everywhere in many distros and in OpenWRT and LEAD as well, of course. I'm Holger, this is Linksys. There's a lot of stuff about me which is a bit boring, so I'll just mm, cut it. Nothing special here, so... We'll publish the slides so you can read it later. There's a lot of information on the slides, so we'll go fast. Yes, yeah, so uh, there is some fork or some something different. If we say something about OpenWRT, we mean lead, and also if we say lead, OpenWRT, we mean both everywhere. Yeah. There are differences, but when there are, we'll mention them here. So, short question about you. Who knows about reproducible builds? Has seen a talk live or in video? Okay, some people. Who has contributed to reproducible builds? Yay, yay. And who uses Debian or Debian-based system? Because we ask this because there's lots of things about Debian now, so that's... Okay, so <clears throat> while I talk for the Debian thing, I'm only one person and this is the whole Debian team. We're about 50 people working on it now. And a lot of things, the tests are running on a Jenkins instance from Debian. But again, this is the team working on this Jenkins stuff. And all these people in red are non-Debian people who contributed to the Debian Jenkins, so it's quite some. And so about what are we doing, reproducible builds, and why? And actually, I would just like to point you to this talk from Congress two years ago from Seth Perry and Mike Schoen about reproducible builds. They explain very much in detail the ways to attack the binary build process. Um, it's on video, I, I recommend to watch it, it's really good. Just, they had one root exploit, um, a CVE from 2002. Um, there was a single bit difference in the binary. So there was an error, was the comparison was greater and it should have been greater then, and the difference in 500 kilobyte was one bit. And that gave you um, remote root. The other example they had, there was a live demo which modified sources in memory but not on disk. So if you examine the sources, the sources look fine. If you build the sources, you get Trojan binary. Um, and you, if you're running a computer on the network, not for 24-7, but for a year or several years, there's so many attack vectors. Um, that if you have physical access to computers, you can get attack it even more. And as this talk shows, there's huge financial incentive to crack developer machines or projects net infrastructure. Like if you, Iran has a budget for 100 million to spend on censorship. So if you want to overcome this, there's lots of money and I can protect my laptop against some attackers, but if you put enough attackers on the problem, they will get you. And this is really in this talk. Um, and there was also, in this talk, they had an example from a CIA conference where CIA designed a system where they would um, put a backdoor in a SDK and make developers use it. And that was a CIA design. And then in 2014, or whenever Xcode Ghost was found in the wild, where somebody did this, not, probably not the CIA, but somebody else, they compromised the SDK for iOS and there were some 20 million users affected by this attack. So this is happening in the wild. People compromise SDKs to get the users. They're not really after the developers, but the users, but to get the users, they go after developers. And our solution is that we promise that anyone can always generate identical binary packets from a given source. That's as simple as it is. So, and the point is rebuilding. You build the source, I build the source, we get the same result. Um, and this we call reproducible builds. And I have skipped the de demo with the Debian package because it's boring and it takes a bit. So you build a check package normally and you get five different um, piles of bits. And with our patches you build it five times or how many times you want and you get the same bits. And it's really as simple. In the OpenWRT lead case you would build packages or the the, the image, which should be the same bit, but that's really it. It's just about creating this exactly the same output. And we think this should become the norm. So 
it's only we want to change the meaning of free software that it's only free software if it's reproducible because that's a quality feature we think and there's more benefits than security it gets faster builds it gets faster upload we've discovered a lot of QA issues like failures to build in the future because we test building in the future we test building with weird locales Google does reproducible builds to save money because they cut down on developer time the builds are faster and they save money um, that was the motivation part really if this was too fast this one talk from Congress is really good about what we did this is now presenting a bit the results before the things so we made this web page reproduciblebuilds.org which has lots of uh, has a good description of the problem of common problems of tools of solutions it links to git repository irk list mailing list if you remember one thing remember this url um, and then we wrote a tool diffoscope um, with diffoscope you can give two objects to debian packages to ipk packages to squashfs files to whatever to isos it will recursively analyze it and then show the diff so you give it to an iso which has a zip file with a pdf inside and there's a png in the pdf and the png differs because of the the time zone embedded in the in the timestamp <coughs> diffoscope will show you that the timestamp differs it's really neat has HTML output it's available in many distributions and it basically looks like this so on the left is one the one build on the right the other and on the bottom you see it clearly one is v version 506 and the other seven and it does this for many 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 different files if you haven't looked at diffoscope diffoscope is really really great <coughs> and diffoscope is only used for debugging for finding out why something is unreproducible it's not the tool to check if something is unreproducible to check if something is unreproducible there are different piles of bit that's enough but if you want to find out why use diffoscope and there's try diffoscope org which is a web service so you don't have to install it just upload them on the web page there's also a command line client give diffoscope a try and then we made this web page test reproducible builds org in the beginning we only tested debian now we also test openwrt lead some bsds arch linux fedora and also fdroid it's running sponsored the arm amd64 hardware is sponsored by profitbricks with half a terabyte of ram now and 150 cores so it's building debian and other stuff really fast we have some little arm nodes which is also a nice project because they're like raspberry pi banana pi and whatnot and they have one tenth of the power and they are almost as fast as the md64 we have 300 jenkins jobs running there and it's all python scripts and a bit of bash and this creates the results and presents them continuously and when we test debian so what we do is we build twice and then we run diffoscope if it's not the same and for this two builds we vary various parameters like the username the host name the time zone not binary stone embed time zone but all the, the documentation tools all the pdf or whatever generators they embed time zones locales also we the kernel the kernel is varied we have one build with the 316 kernel one with a 4x kernel we vary the cpu type we have a file system which we don't have enabled disorder fs because read dear gives the results in non in deterministic order but it's different on different file systems so if you build whatever one build with xfs and the other on x4 it might be different so we vary this on purpose as well and we have machines which run in the future a year a month and three days ahead so we can also see if the date varies and we also notice problems of building in the future which is sometimes annoying um, and so this is our test setup we vary the environment build twice and compare it and the problems we find um, are mostly timestamps 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 time zones locales the build pass is new and there's lots of other issues but it's really mostly timestamps 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 and a bit locales build pass and lunar gave a nice talk at last camp um, where he has some common problems and the solutions for the problems as well like 
calling gzip with minus n is one thing to make the timestamp, I think, go away in gzip archives. This is all in this talk and on our web page as well. And for one problem, we invented source date epoch, which is a specification. It's two, ki two kilobytes of ASCII text. And source date epoch is the last modification of the source, because this is really relevant. After that, the source doesn't change anymore. So you can re reset build timestamps with the source date epoch, because that is deterministic, will not change. You can also use for random seed. Um, in Debian, we did it from the last Debian changelog entry. Could also be the last git commit, the last file modification, whatever. And um, the spec is there. It has been adopted by many distributions like OpenWT Elite, BSD, Arch Linux, but also GCC, DPackage, GoScript. There's many, many software which have adopted um, source state epoch by now. It's like one and a half years old. So Debian quickly. So this is the progress in Debian testing, and the green stuff are the reproducible packages, the orange, the unreproducible, and the red ones have other problems. So we had 91% reproducible packages, which is quite great. Um, but then we introduced build path variation. We knew that would be a problem building in a different path, but we thought, okay, we want, and which can be fixed easily because you build in a deterministic path, TMP, package names, slash version or something. But we want to really fix the problem on the ground, so we did, okay, we vary the build path as well. And this is unstable, and the, on the right, this bump going down there, we went from 90 to 75%. And now we are identifying the issues with build path issues, which is, um, not only in, in, in binaries, but it's really all a lot in documentation, PDF, HTML, they all embed build parse. And we file bugs in Debian. These are bugs with patches about reproducible build issues. So we filed about 2,000 bugs with patches in the last year, and there's still 600 open or something. And we also want, in Debian, we want to file these bugs upstream because we don't care about only, only about Debian but about the whole free software world and it doesn't help to have the problem fixed in Debian so we send them upstream so others benefit from this. And so if you want to go to see how any Debian package is doing, go to this reproducible Debian net slash source package. That's really, you can look for anything. We have categorized it in issues and done a lot of things, but really you can go to any source package and um, see the status there. And we also want to collaborate on this, but I skipped this because we have little time and that's also about OpenWT. So Debian is not reproducible at the moment, it's just a proof of concept. We need one more or two more changes in Debian which hopefully happen before the stretch release mm -hmm. and then Debian will be partly reproducible but not everything because we need to rebuild and the way the Debian release process works, blah, blah, blah. But we are still not there because then we need the user tools. We need, then we are able to do reproducible builds, but the users are still not able to verify it easily. And all these user tools is still the stuff we need to do, which we haven't solved yet. Because you can, you can do manually verify it, but if you want to do this for 1,000 packages, that doesn't scale. So there needs to be tool support again, and the talk is not about this so much. And maybe in two years, we'll be 100%, maybe. And then, as I said, we also we write a weekly blog post with our efforts, so it's on Planet Debian, but it's an RSS feed blog, which has all the things what we're doing. We did a meeting in last year, December, and we'll have a meeting this year in Berlin again. If you w want to work on reproducible builds in your project, please talk to me, and it will be mid-December in Berlin. Non-Debian world, we are skipping these, which we're also testing, which are BSD, some Linuxes. And there's other stuff. One thing to mention, this was all started with Bitcoin and Tor, who thought, hmm, if Bitcoin had a lot of market value and if somebody got a compromised Bitcoin client, they could say the Bitcoin developers were evil. And with reproducible builds, they can say, no, we are not evil. We, they gave you the binary. Tor had a similar thing. And commercial software, I'll skip it, but the only commercial software is not safe driving cars, power plants, drones. They can all be unreproducible. Gambling machines have to be re reproducible. Anyhow, OpenWRT. Yeah, now let's come to the OpenWRT state. Um, first of all, thanks to Debian, it was quite easy to reach a high, high state of reproducibility. 
um, we have on, on Test Jenkins, uh, on uh, testreproducablebuilds.org, we have there uh, also some web page, one for lead, one for OpenRBT, and it has some variations. It looks quite good. Most of the packages, I think 99% of our package we test are reproducible, uh, of course, be thanks to Debian, because they've also filed the bugs upstream. But for images, it's a little bit more difficult, so that's, yeah, because Squash has generates some, some in, in reproducibility. So, uh, yeah, thanks to, it was something about 20 patches, most are of the build systems, uh, and this was it basically what's done so far thanks to these contributors. Um, so what's next? Um, at the moment we need more variations. We are only building on, on two machines which don't have so much variations and we, at the moment we are only testing one target to, uh, to hold the building time short. So we are imp still improving the, the test setup. Uh, yeah, and at the moment we are only building once a week. Uh, we really would like to see if this is the, the tool for you every, every day that you can take a look, hey, why isn't this reproducible? Let's file a bug or fix it directly. Well, to explain, we have lots of more resources which you could put in there if people would use it. But at the moment, Lynxis and me are the only ones really looking at these open results. So if more people look at it, we can throw more resources at it and build and build and build and compare and test. Yeah, and at the moment we are only building the base packages. Um, the next big to do is uh, if you want to rebuild OpenWRT on your own to check if, if there are no changes, we need to define the environment. What, what packages are installed, what kind of uh, system you're using because um, Debian has already the built info file where it, it it says like I've used this make version, this this new tools, whatever, and this is quite important. Otherwise, you with a different build environment, you probably get a different binary package. These are the instructions how to rebuild, not how to, but what to rebuild, what is to expect it. So this is needed that other people can in a month or two months take a release. So what OpenWRT leader, you release binaries, and you also need to release these checksums so other people can and the check can rebuild the binaries, that's the idea. Skip. And then, so this, these step info files, they need to be shared and we don't really know how. We need to think about this and we need to do rebuilds. So we could do individual rebuilds, but we don't think this would scale. So we think of more organizations, be it the ACLU, Deutsche Bank, or whoever, Debian builds, rebuilds, Fedora. So we need some systematic rebuilds of different institutions rebuilding different stuff. And then you can say, I trust this person. So one example is also rebuilt by the US Army, the Russian Army, and the Army of North Korea. And if they all three agree, then it's probably good binary. <laughs> or you maybe say, ah, I, yeah, whatever, you, you can pick some. And then there's also user tools. Do you really want to install this unreproducible software? Do you want to build it and um, prove the reproducibility yourself? And how many science checksums, how many rebuilds do you need until it's really, until you trust it? And whom do you trust? That was it, we were in time. Uh -huh. As a software developer, use source, e source state epoch. You can build your own team. Um, so thanks to OpenRT Summit and the ELCE and the Linux Foundation for sponsoring me and ProfitBrix for all the hardware. And these are the resources for you and maybe we have one minute for one question. One minute for one question. It was too fast. <laughs> Come on. Okay, we'll be here this afternoon. You can talk to us in the hall. Thank you.